the Dingo Dingo want to play bingo, that's going to be an advert that's going to be really popular in about 10 years. <laughs> it's just a, a black shirt and Dingo yep. who wants to play bingo. Yeah, it's going to be huge. <laughs> it's going to beat the shit out of that fox. <laughs> oh, crazy bingo fox. Yeah, he's scary. Foxy bingo. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah. He's a bit crazy. The time for sexy bingo is over. It's time for harsh wolf-like bingo. Yeah, I think it's going to go the way of burger chains. So it's going to go dirty bingo. Honest. Filthy bingo. They've already got that. Rebel Honest bingo. bingo. Rebel, Rebel bingo. bingo. <laughs> I've got a friend who did the lighting for Rebel bingo for years. It's a pretty cool thing. How do you light bingo? Very uh, dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweeping spots... And if you ring your I've won bell, they all zoom in yeah, on you. Yeah, I think they just sort of oh, turn wow. bingo into this, like, three feet. They do it in East London and turn it into this mad extravaganza, and it's like really fun and stupid and boozy. Um, and, and oh, that's good because like always when you go to bingo and you do go to the more traditional outlets, you do get shushed a lot if you try and hoop and holler. Yeah, I think that's it. Get rid of get rid of all of that mentality and just double all the hooping and hollering. And then, yeah. yeah, and you, plus, you're kind of secretly thinking if they're all enjoying themselves so much, they're probably not paying attention to their tickets. I'm going to win more. It's still bingo, yeah. though, so nah. Has so anyone ever had an idea for a bingo nightclub? Mm. Did I come up with that? Maybe. Edit this out of the podcast. <laughs> I've got a kickstart. Has it been right a yeah. minute? Well, this bingo chat, have we even started the podcast I yet? I think we have. Oh it's my all, god. It's all going Quick, in. Bobble me, bobble me, log. <laughs> Matt, you said bobble, you mean de bobble. I mean de bobble. What's happening here is log is de bobbling Matthew's sweatshirt I'm, using a de bobbling device. I'm constantly plagued by bobbles, so having a de bobbler that's to hand like this is a constant reassurance. I've got to say, it makes me feel like I'm in a weird David Lynch style dream because you're not going to believe me, but on the way over on the tube, I had a moment where I was looking down at my jumper and I looking and I thought, oh, Matt. This this jumper is so bobbly. This is bobble central. And then I, this is the bit you're not going to believe. I then thought to myself just idly, I thought, oh, Steve's always wearing jumpers that are really nice and not bobbly. How does he do that? And then I turn up and immediately, I'm going to went to that with a noise. Debobbling noise. Debobbling <laughs> noise. Can you describe how the debobbler looks? A, or visually impaired at home. It's like a tiny iron which you can't just squeeze all four fingers through. Like, all my fingers are really cramped over there like I'm trying to finger a tight vag. Mm. And, um, <laughs> That's uh, actually not that tight. I mean, anyway, yeah, carry on. It doesn't have any give, is the thing. <laughs> well, it doesn't have any give, no. It's solid plastic. <laughs> Unusual. Well, as, as a man who's used to the anus, um, mm. I just assumed vagas were capacious beyond <laughs> imagination. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little dial, dial thing with a whirling blade that sets in motion when you do that, making this sound. And there's some fluff. There's some fluff inside there, Keeps which the I can only imagine is bobbles in its primal form. It's a little form. like an electric razor, but for your sh- sweater. Hmm. But yeah, for whatever reason, the whole of my afternoon has been about bobbly jumpers, which means it like, feels like there's some weird subtext going on in a weird dream sequence film. Well, no more shall you be concerned with bobbles, for you now have... <laughs> Access to a debobbler for the next 45 minutes. I'm debobbling myself, man. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. Wow. Way to make me feel less needed in this equation. <laughs> Fuck you, love. I'm the debobbler. No. Give me back the debobbler. No. You just picked up my debobbler. I'm debobbling. What? Is there a strict hierarchy You're of debobbling in this room? You're a debobbling agent. <laughs> You're a debobbling middle man. Oh, here's so services. Sp- so speaks the debobbling source. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I debobble what I like. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys do a podcast? Meanwhile, Matt's bobbling himself senseless. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Matthew, there is nearly a bobble left to He's... speak of. <laughs> All right, you got As it should later. be. Yeah. Hey. Yo-ho, yo-ho. Another public service announcement from... Hello. Hi. Hey. What up? A brand new program helping thousands of men and women solve their personal problems and safeguard friendship. Pure and good. It has the Parents Magazine feel. Neat, fresh colored, almost invisible. We refuse to be responsible. Hey, welcome to episode 213 of the Regular Features Podcast. Sponsored by JML de Boblings. <laughs> that, was a, that was a meandering introduction, but I hope you born bored with... Bored with... I hope you were bored with us. <laughs> oh, 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 dear. Hey, um, my name's Steve Hogarty. I'm one but a fraction of the Regular Features Comedy Podcast. 
multiplied that numerator by two, whatever it was, because I am another equal fraction. Yes, and equal, Steve, whatever you may say in those emails. Who's been fuzzying up the denominator in this equation, if not Matt Lees? Yes. I can't keep up with that. We, we were almost subtracting one from the denominator. <laughs> <laughs> the bob a lob a lob Yeah, hello, it's me again. I've been replaced by Joe a lot recently, but that's fine because he's nice. Oh, well, he's not here today. Yeah. Because uh, everyone else has gone to... So you better fucking yeah. restake your claim. Just... I've, already, I've already given him a shout-out for this on Twitter, but I just want to say on the podcast as well, kudos. Steve Steve had an invitation to fancy drinks eating this night, and he decided not to in order to podcast instead. You, I you had could... an invite to the Games Media Awards, and I, I decided I would rather spend it here with you guys than, you know... Because you weren't up for an award, were you? Joe, I wasn't, but they invited me, and a woman who um, whom I have never met said it wouldn't be the same without you. That's amazing. And I thought to reply, how the fuck would you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but quite I right, but... but, but. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Gav and Joe... Awards are their biggest priority. They're like second tier <laughs> friends now, but really. But regular features is my number one priority. I heard we were up for an award, though. I, on a podcast I listened to, I heard that we were going to win an award, right? No. Is this a whimsical <laughs> aside? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the award you think we're going to win, Matt? Best podcast. Oh, <laughs> that's an imaginative award. Nick. Did you listen? <laughs> did you listen to the full episode? No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Gets to a point where we realise we weren't nominated. Oh. But if I'd gone, enough of us would have been there that we could have stormed the stage, killed them all. <laughs> just. just Pretending that we thought we were nominated, and it'd be so embarrassed they just give us the award. Oh, I don't even want to know. Is there actually a live feed of this? Is it happening no, now? It's not worth watching, is it? <laughs> Come on, it's just a live feed for anyone who gives a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I think it's anyone on who BBC gives a fuck is in the room. I'm pretty sure. Um, they don't make BBCs high enough for this <laughs> shit. <laughs> I did a feature and I liked it. I hope my boyfriend don't. Mind it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact we instantly went back into me and Steve getting slightly mathsy to your disdain as well. <laughs> I don't mind it, I just don't understand it. And so I'm just like, I can't work out at the point at which you start, you start making up terms. Usually never. I think you, you I always just know what you're on thinking about. thinking that the the reason why we couldn't I didn't know if either, whether I was a quarter or a fifth of the podcast now. yeah that's why that's why I was, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about you ah, by so not yeah, being uh, the, the denominator, denominator the, the one. yeah it's going to be really complicated <laughs> while I'm actually back isn't it we're going to have like too many podcast cooks not enough podcast balls not many, yeah not many firm not how stock. is that going to work I think we could do twice as many podcasts Jesus I have to start well, doing maybe we split off. I'm not being not in half of them maybe we precisely that's it you know yeah Maybe we split off into two rival podcasts. Or maybe you have to find someone in Nottingham who's capable of being a sixth member and I can do two man <laughs> bits that we can send to you and have oh, in the middle yeah, of yours. I definitely don't want to have of, less log just because yeah. we've always got enough can people here. just get rid of Joe? <sighs> he was never really a member to begin with. And I mean, neither's Gav. He came in in episode two. Yeah. It's really just the three of us. Yeah. It right. always has been in yeah. my heart. <laughs> can you imagine when it actually was the three of us? Episode one. Was, yeah. Oh, best I, I, episode. And when we surprised ourselves by actually pulling off something that wasn't exactly brilliant, but oh, was competent to listen to. You listen to episode <laughs> one, it's awful. But my, my feature is the best one I've ever done. Yeah, all, of, the, all of my favourite features, I always think, oh God, that was well good. When was that? And it was like episode four, or like episode six. It's like oh, yeah. the first ten. <laughs> and, and when you did like your dreams feature, I was thinking, I'm sure I've done a dreams I had feature. And I thought, hmm. 13! Episode 13? Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. Good, I remember yeah. the cube, you're in a hypercube. Yeah, yeah. We ran, yeah, we ran out of ideas really quick. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for Steve's regular feature. Steve's pissed himself. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Do you want me to debobble it away, Steve? <laughs> you can't just say that. There's some things you can't debobble. Just cannot debobble. Even oh, if it was bubbles. It's broken not... the debobbler. <laughs> it's not supposed to be this you've wet. Got, yeah, you've got pissy lint in it. Oh. Soggy bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Pissy Link, and this is Soggy Bubbles. I'm Pissy Link in it. So, last time we all spoke, I was a man who'd never pissed himself in public. And look at me now. (laughs) You've grown an inch. People Um, do piss themselves. It happens. Yeah. I was saying this to my uh, partner the other day, because she was like, oh, woo, yeah, what if this happens and I start pissing myself? And I was like, people piss themselves? I was like, I pissed myself, like, recently. And she yeah, was but like, what if I Wait. start pissing myself and never stop? <laughs> That's another question, isn't it? 
But yeah, I mean, I couldn't. I think I did it when I was basically in the house, but you did it in public. Yeah. Oh, you have told the story where you yeah, pissed yourself in the podcast. Yeah, it's before. not. It's like. I did it in the most public place there is. Did, did you it? not even try. Hang on, do you want to tell the story? But did you not try and pinch your foreskin shut over <sighs> your bell end? I tried everything. Yeah. Oh my I mean, god. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I don't know what happens when it happens, but every now and then it's suddenly like you've just had six pints of liquid poured into you and your body yeah. just goes, time to piss, and it's like immediate. And you go, what, what? And I've held things in longer. Yeah. I've held in much longer than you've I could hold. held in, in longer things, I imagine. <laughs> <as well. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me set the scene. I'll paint the picture for you. With piss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had just come from. Google's launch of the Pixel phone, Google Home, and Google Personal Assistant services, as well as their Google Wi-Fi services in the US, which was at a big party in Shoreditch. Is that like when you're not allowed to say Xbox, you have to say Xbox Video Game and Home Computer Entertainment System? They launched a bunch of different things. Oh, fuck, right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so and it was in a big thing in Shoreditch. And I thought it was, I always think it's poignant when you go to, well... On this one specifically, where they're launching new expensive telephones for us to buy. And on the way into the venue in Shoreditch, there was a man rummaging through the bin looking for food. Oh. It's like, ah, oh, human metaphor, I like it. Yeah, this Here's is a, my this stamp, is a, let me in. <laughs> Juxtapose that, Your Majesty. <laughs> um, at the end of the night, Craig David showed up. Whoa! And he sang his song. I was going to say, was he rummaging through the bins for food? <laughs> <laughs> He's, a joke. he's doing again. quite well again yeah. now. He's, he's, got, he's buff, right? He's on a billboard. He had that Instagram picture that went yeah. up where he's buff. He's like, like forget about Bo Selector because I'm buff. Yeah. Do you remember the guy in Bo Selector? That character wasn't buff. He was yeah. quite fat-headed. It was. I don't I, even have a Kestrel. I think this is good enough a reason to bring Bo Selector back just to ruin his career again. <laughs> oh, God, that would be so good. <laughs> it is like, now, when you see the whole span of how that panned out, it's proper horrible Game of Thrones shit, isn't it? That that was like the rise of Keith Lemon, and he just just pushed a man into the dirt repeatedly with Bo Selector, and then went on to just be this sort of tyrant of weak comedy. Yeah, but Bo Selector was really funny. I kind of really enjoyed it at the time. I... I, I I want to watch it again to find out if I still like it, but it's just my fucking brand of disgust. Anyway, this is all racing through my head as I saw Craig David do his famous song, Seven Day Sex with a Girl. Oh, boy. Yeah. What does he do on the fifth day again? Does he make land or birds, or does he have sex? <laughs> I think it's just rimming. <laughs> Solid day. It's modern, yeah. Rimming, just... Book it out. <laughs> Sandra, Get book the whole day off. That's all we're doing. <laughs> Sandra's not the lady, it's his assistant. Choking on her ass by Friday was the lyric. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll drop in an audio clip now of, um, yes, of ch- how he... Craig David choking on a woman's <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was good. He was good fun. Good man. Anyway, that's all a B-plot to the A-plot, which is my bladder, which is filling up with liquid urine, I thought. Is there free booze at this event? Oh, yeah, there's free booze. So I had lots of the free booze. <laughs> uh, you okay? <laughs> Might be a key clue. I used the toilet, went back, watched Craig David do his song Seven Day Sex with a Girl, and then thought, now oh, it's time for me to go home. And this was the thought that went through my head, leaving the venue. I need to piss but I'm sure I can ride this fat bladder all the way home. <laughs> After all, I'm a man who has never pissed himself. For 29 years, I have maintained an unbroken record of not shooting hot streams of piss down my legs. Based on previous experience, I'll be fine. You could run this data set of the times I have and haven't pissed myself through a supercomputer, and it would print out a little slip of paper, and on the paper it would say, I predict that you are not going to piss yourself. All I have to do is ride an overground train and then an underground train and then walk the short distance from the tube station to my home. Sounds easy, right? It does. I do like the fact that piss down both your legs. It's like it starts in one leg, but the sheer force of piss sends your dick flapping upwards and around before yeah. it finally comes to rest and trickles down the other. 37 minutes, said City Mapper. 37 minutes, that is... I've held in pisses for much longer than my that. My God, if I saw 37 minutes, I perhaps it's the sign of my advance in years, <laughs> but I would not trust anything on my body with 37 minutes of autonomy. I, not, I did not feel a strong urge to piss then. I thought... Yeah, it's coming, whatever, but Just yeah. a pang, like, oh yeah, I could piss now if, if pushed. Yeah. If push came to shove, I could piss. But I, there is no urgency about it. 
waiting for the overground train. Uh, the sign on the platform has said Dalston Junction one minute for four minutes now. <sighs> And it's not even the that's train that I need. Cruel, because that's like th- 37 minutes is suddenly stretching into infinity now. Yeah. And your body system, your body's auto response, bladder control systems must be going into spasm. Yes. And it's, yeah, it's like, I, yeah, I'm now having some sort of time crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Great game. <laughs> and that's not even the train that I needed. I needed the one that was next on the board. The one that says Highbury and Islington, six minutes. And I'd said that for four minutes. That's 10 minutes. <laughs> But I must stop thinking about minutes because it's reminding me of piss. A minute is the top end of how long it takes to piss. Won't be a minute is something I say, something I say when I get up to go to the toilet. And my nuts is where your piss comes from. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that is where my piss comes from your nuts. <laughs> Curiously. <laughs> the train finally did show up. I got on the underground part of my journey. And by this stage, it was like uncomfortable leg shuffling like oh we oh, oh, really need to go okay but it's only two stops that's all I need to do okie dokie this is the leg two you've done overground yep now you're underground I'm like 15 minutes tops from my house oh I can my do God. this I can God. hold it in worst case scenario I know there's a little side street at the end of the tube yeah. station I yeah. could just duck down it and I could, I could do it that way but I'm fairly certain I was going to make it home sitting on the underground train I thought what are the chances that this is the day I piss myself for the first time Pissing yourself for the first time is something that only happens once in your life. Even if you pissed yourself for the first time once a year, that's still only a 1 in 365 chance that today's the day that I piss myself. Those are good odds. Oh, shit, a little bit of piss just came out. (laughs) (laughs) But that, a little bit of piss... Isn't pissing yourself? It, oh, no, it's mm. not pissing yourself. I would not think. Oh, that. It's, it's, it's not. Pissing no. Otherwise, I'm not arguing with that. I just think that once you once the floodgates opened, it's a different game. So I thought. I thought. Okay, this is one of two ways of thinking about this. I've eased pressure on the bladder by otherwise by some little amount of piss coming out. Yeah, you've also broken the seal. But I've broken the seal, and now I don't know if if there's a physiological, real physiological thing breaking the seal. The notion that the once you piss, seal. you need to yeah. piss. I don't know is if it's real or not. Thing? But I'd, certainly, I'd start having more mental images of the little Dutch boy who put his finger in the dike, and I'd start trying to stuff my fingers into my dick hole. Yeah, because yeah. now I know that the. The whatever pipe connects my urethra to the bladder is now filled with piss because that's yeah. how it gets to the end. That's yeah. how it gets. <sighs> and now that it's there, I'm using the the muscles in the tip of my penis to clamp it. Yes, shut. it's past one of the sphincters. Oh, yeah. I'm like now clamping you're in my the dick final sphincter. Just, just to get this yeah. in my head. Like, yeah. if, if you at home are clamping your dick as well, if you have one, then. Phew. So I had to start pinching, like Log said. Yeah, because I do worry that if you do pinch your foreskin, and I'm assuming you're not a you're an uncut gentleman, uh, you do it create a like very a real risk of making a piss balloon. Oh yeah, which is great fun to do at a urinal. <laughs> yeah, but not on the Victoria line. So, oh, that's named after a queen. <laughs> is this treason? <laughs> I had to get up out of my seat because I thought, right, there's a real chance I'm going to piss myself. And I'm not going to do it sitting next to people. I went to stick. How busy was the train? All the seats were filled. There were maybe and three or four people filled. standing up. <laughs> so fairly busy train, not packed. <laughs> I went to stand over by the doors, and I thought, okay, if it has to happen, it's going to happen here, not on a seat, because I don't, because I don't want to ruin, ruin the the bonquette and the moquette. Of the seat. You don't want to be the guy who just pissed on that seat. You no. don't want having people, a stream people, of people having to go, don't sit on that seat. Exactly. They'd be that screaming. That man just pissed on it. The door's open, and it's not my station. It's the station after my station. Oh, oh you, you fucking, fucking idiot. Fledgling poo. I'm so used to getting on at one station that I'd got on a station afterwards without thinking about it, and I'd gone two stops. I overshot my station. I ran out of the train arms in the air <laughs> flailing and I was looking for staff at this point to say look I am about to piss myself I really need to use a toilet it's an emergency but fucking TFL staff cuts mate there's not a soul to be seen you should have pissed on one of those robots <laughs> they've got now that's what they if they're going to get rid of people instead of robots then piss on the robots on the that's robots. what I say <laughs> piss into an oyster card slot yeah <laughs> slots the contactless piss on one of those windows with grey covers on because there's no one in those empty grey offices yeah I d- didn't know what I was going to do other than get back on the southbound tube and try you, to get back to you my didn't. my Jeez. stop did you not just get off and just find a, an alleyway or a wall or something piss onto the tracks and test that theory <laughs> 
On the way back south, it all gets a bit blurry. The urgency was so strong, and the sense of shame was building a little bit more had come out. I went and stood in the corner of the carriage, and I was clenching with all of my might. And I just knew it was inevitable. I knew it was going to happen. It happened. It started flowing. Oh, and I stopped it for a second, and it went again. Yeah, that's yeah, like, it's, yeah. It's, it's, every, thing, every time I'm thinking, well, there's a li- less pressure now. Maybe I'll be able to stop it this time. Yeah. Were you actually... What I'd be doing at this point is pushing one leg out on point, hoping that the piss would follow my leg unnoticed and dribble down the side of the train. Uh, so it's as closest to the door. Is this what you're doing? I, I where, where is your piss coming out? <laughs> I didn't encourage so. Train? So it's spreading down my leg. I looked down and it was trickles coming out the bottom of my leg. So if someone had been looking at my trouser legs, they would have noticed wetness puddling onto the floor. But are there drips coming through the fabric? Uh, no, it would trickle down all the way to to the to the bottom of my trouser leg okay. and it was sprinkling out the bottom. Uh, I had to take my coat off, wrap it around myself that's, to, that's to, clever. to cover cover my front section of my body. But it's in your shoes, I imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's my problem to deal with, not theirs. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's only your business log. It yeah. just it just makes the trudge home that little bit more sad. <laughs> then I had to run um, run home. Uh, actually, I walked home. I felt there's a weird sense of serenity as well once you've done it. You Absolutely, think it's done. because you still have a sense of relief. For having pissed. I'm just that time when I was eating a ice cream. I was and just thinking that. Myself. Yeah. yeah. It was like go, fuck this, fuck everything. I couldn't care less yeah. anymore. When I got home, I, I I ran in. I immediately ran up to the bathroom, um, had a shower, and went and put my my pissy jeans in the in the wash. And my boyfriend <laughs> really annoyed at me. It's like, why did you just run in and go to the shower? And it's like. Well, because I pissed myself. <laughs> I and mean, that's my feature about pissing myself. It wasn't very funny, but it's just, you know, it's documentary. I find it fascinating, the curve, uh, the sharpness of the curve in your brain of going like, this is fine, I have a plan, I'm definitely going to make it. Mm. I could stop there on the way, no, 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 it's fine, I'll make it, to then just suddenly out of nowhere going, you're not going to make the, this is happening, and you just, it just comes out of nowhere. Because when it happened to me, I was like, oh, I can't need a piss. I was like, maybe you should go into like, somewhere in town. Like, and I was like, nah, it'd be fine. Then you got to walk five minutes home. And in that five minutes, something just clicked. And it was just like going from being like, it's fine, to just being like, this is happening. There's nothing yeah. you can do. Your body is rebelling. Like, they're holding up little signs. That just and say, then you just start piss. thinking, what's everyone's problem with piss anyway? Yeah, can't we, we all, all have just to do it. Do it just anywhere. accept that every now and then someone's going to just explode from their legs, do it into a letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's fine. We'll just get over it. Especially that woman who stared at me. <laughs> oh, I was, saying, was there anyone who noticed? There was a woman who was looking at me, shuffling around the corner of the tube like some sort of sketchy drugs man. It's tough, though, because oh, you, you could have had a problem. Lips. You could have had any, any sorts of problem. Well, you I, have a problem. I could have had a disease. Yeah, precisely. That caused me to urinate down my legs. Maybe you did. Maybe you pissed it out. She doesn't <laughs> know. I don't know. No one can really No one say. really knows. I'm tired of talking about the time I pissed myself now. I feel... A little bit embarrassed, and it's time to move on to the next feature. I don't, can I have another feature, please? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> moving back to your piss, though, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> just did a, just did, a, did a jingle. It wasn't a real jingle, Steve. <laughs> you just made a noise with your mouth. Shit, I thought I could just do my own jingles to progress the podcast. <laughs> the points are I find convenient. <laughs> Oh, hello, would you like another feature? Yes, please, that would be wonderful. Hello. Hello. What's up, pricks? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I've got a feature for you. Um, I've been doing so many things. I've been away, I've been like a, a kind of wandering dragon. Just, just oh, kind of... you, we noticed. All oh, right, You're yeah. No, a I've... wandering dragon. Yeah, like a wandering that dragon. That old phrase. Yeah. That's the uh, name of a... <laughs> Chinese restaurant in Mapley, Nottingham. Look, any combination of a word and then dragon is is a, a, a Chinese restaurant somewhere, Log. Probably also a very strong cider. 
Yeah, fumbling dragon, wandering. Anyway, I've been around. <laughs> I've been I've been doing lots of things. Oh man, so many features to choose from that I'll forget about. It's fine. Yeah. Anyway, I've been I've been in boats. I've been in so many weddings and suits. I've been attacked by giant plants. I've you been... went underwater and defeated Ruby Weapon. I did. And people always said that you couldn't do that. I thought you were going to say Ruby Wax then. <laughs> <laughs> Kill her as well. Yeah, with my hands. Bubbly, bubbly. I need died, to correct died, myself. Died. It's Emerald Weapon. Emerald. Oh, yeah, Ruby it's Weapon. Ruby weapon. Right, that puts the, in the fists desert. in the ground and then attacks you from behind. I saw your cheeky face sink. Is everyone going to notice? That's good. And Log hates when I mention going on defeating Ruby Weapon because he seems to think it's his story. Like, he's the only one who's done it. I <laughs> mm, don't know. Cer- it certainly is. Your, so- <laughs> it's your go-to Final Fantasy reference. Which, uh, oh, absolutely. And the same with VR. My go-to VR reference is Legend Quest, the game I played in 1992 in Nottingham which I'm currently reusing for a review of PSVR (laughs) (laughs) keep on coming (laughs) keep that memory turgid but one of the things I did recently which was a a kind of something I planned to do with a friend of mine and a group of people and it was like a physical kind of exercise thing where uh, you go and you do all this mad stuff and you do it as a team based thing and uh, you, you pay to do it and um I was planning to like kind of train for it and like you know get myself fit and then go and have get myself strong and then go and have this fun kind of team building exercise thing. I didn't have any time to to exercise, so I just ate loads of pasta, and that works. Turns out if you just eat nothing but like carbs for two days before you do something, then you just makes you good at running temporarily. Mm. It doesn't make any sense, but Jesus. Anyway, this is um, the event I went along to. It's really well known, actually. It's kind of around the world. They do a lot of them. It's called Muddy Fucking Onion. And uh, hello, Muddy Onion. <laughs> yeah, I've got some mates that did Muddy Onion last year. They said it was really good. It's really yeah. hard. Yeah. It's really good. I'll, I'll, but I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just might as well read you because um, you guys should come and do it next time. It's unbelievable. Mm. Honestly, it's just such a. It's like a drug. It's like a cult. Oh man! Oh, and so like everyone's good. helping them each other out, and yeah, it's sort of, sort of a pick you up kind of always thing. Always men with beards, like yeah, so great oh. beards, and like some people do it topless, some people do it without shoes. Anyway, guys, Matt. you guys have got to come <laughs> and do this with me, right? So, I'm, I, no, I mean, I don't know how to convince you. I'll just, I'll just read you some of the stuff from the, uh, from the kind of the leaflet for 2017, which like hopefully will leave you guys like really wanting to sign up because yeah. it's so cool, right? It goes. Onions have layers. Did you know that? Do you know what else has layers? Layers of concrete piled over your corpse after you give up and die, you fucking bloody wimp. This isn't a challenge for spring onions, you fuck. 15 miles of tough and rough jogging with a string of onions around your neck, a whole onion in between your teeth, a bag of small onions balanced on your head, and three big onions in one of those net things swinging back and forth freely from a strip of duct tape lovingly attached to the base of your balls. (laughs) So few things get loving attached there <laughs> takes time I also like to point out that Steve recently spring a leek which is two oh. kinds of onion yeah. <laughs> thank you very much Marty fucking onion isn't a challenge for pricks it's a challenge for real men and real women not fictional people real real people <laughs> are you a real person are you capable of running through some mud and shit for about half a day and pretending that what you're doing is somehow harrowing whilst actually you're just a middle class jeb paying a company to fuck you up with mud and onions so you can pretend that you're you've any vague concept of the meaning of adversity new obstacles on the course this year the onion big wall <laughs> fuck that's a big Big wall. How are you going to get over that? With onions, mud, and friendship, you mad fucks. Sponsored by Duracell. Fuck me, it's cold and wet. Get in the water. Get out of the water. Get in the water again. Now you're muddy. Now there's onions. Jump. Jump over that thing. Get down. Get up again. Get in the water again. Fuck. Sponsored by Wittards of Chelsea. The Skittles onion arsehole experience. A man puts Skittles up your arsehole one by one until you ask if you're allowed to leave. And you are. And then you sheepishly leave. Sponsored by Skittles. (laughs) Taste the rainbow. Gosh, that's mud. Are you ready to be covered in mud again somehow? It's sponsored by a deluxe 4x4 car company or or someone who makes chocolate desserts or maybe an energy drink. The Skittles onion arsehole experience. 
I've done that one, <laughs> but you will do it again, twice, and then you'll go round in a circle and do it a third I time. I copied and pasted this in the script. <laughs> if you've done it and then you've done it again, when you do it again, it'll be the fourth time. Too many Skittles. <laughs> and you keep asking if you're allowed to leave as if you haven't come back of your own volition. <laughs> you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> Finally for 2017, The Onion Bit. Sponsored by purplefruityplums.com. This bowl of onions all look alike, but one of them has a stone in the middle. Find out which one by eating them all, now. A stone like you get in a plum or a peach. That's the pun being alluded to by the word pit. It's an unexpected usage of a word for the purposes of humour and many more. <laughs> for just 70 of your English pound, muddy fucking onion will ruin your shoes, bruise both of your knees and empower your ego with a visible glow that shouts, hey, in the event of some cataclysmic shift in world order, I wouldn't crumple into a state of failure like a damp crinkle cut crisp. I'm a tiny mountain that won't melt under pressure. I'm not a piece of Toblerone under duress. There's no sweaty thumb <laughs> pressing down on me. I'm a lion. I'm a dog. I'm several mixed metaphors. Onions. Layer one. You've never run, muddy fucking onion. So I'll let you off easy. One onion, sellotape to the back of each hand. Layer two. You've given us money before. Welcome back. We've knitted you a headband out of sautéed shallots and we're using it to bind the wrists of your husband. If we see you grimace even once, they're dead. That's it. Sounds like a joke, but we'll kill them. Layer three. Feel the onion burn. The heat's too high. The pan's non... non... The heat's too high. The pan's not non-stick. These onions are black. By which I mean they're back in black. By which I presumably mean that they're rock and roll. You don't have a headband. You don't have a husband. And now you just run. It's what you do. It's all you do. You just run and you keep running and you hope to God we never catch you. <laughs> I want to listen to that whilst running. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking... Wow. Yeah. It God, your, your onion bits are truly mesmeric. It reminds me of this, a similar assault course, which I think you're leading to, which is the tough onion. The tough onion, yeah. 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 No, I haven't I done got, that. I finally got the reference. Yeah, it's tough that's, onion. that's really popular. Yeah. But you should come and do tough onion next year. It's great. It's team building. You give a man loads of money. You look like you've built a team. Oh, man, I've got, I've got like, it's not here, but yeah, I have. <laughs> So did you prep for the tough onion? Hang on, did you do the onion mudder or the tough onion? I did tough onion. Okay. Uh, yeah, like... Um, no, you did onion mudder. Yeah, on, no, onion mudder. That's it, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I keep getting confused. Muddy fucking onion is, a, is not real. Muddy fucking onion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I did, obviously, that, what you just did there, that wasn't real. That, that was, wasn't that was, real. Yeah. I did muddy onion. Um, and it is, it's a thing. I mean, it's just, it's like religious, you know. It just makes you feel like you're, you you know, you're you're a person who could chop logs or, or, you know, exist in the real world meaningfully. That's a good feature, Matt. Welcome back. Thanks. I I can't stay for long, but thanks. (laughs) Don't don't drop a smoke pellet now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I missed. That's, yeah, you've reminded us. Yeah. Well, we made this goddamn thing in the first place. This is like episode one all over again. It's a, it's the it's the three it's the fierce threesome it's the fearsome threesome. What is it? The trio <laughs> who are Grillo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody tell me where my feet has gone. My regular feature. Elephant in the room time. <laughs> yeah, all right, Matt. guys. Okay. Matt. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. What have you been up to, Matt? I've been doing it. I hope it's been fun. I can't wait to hear your story. I've You've been, been on holidays. <laughs> learning to fly. Upside an down. onion plane. Shooting guns in the sky. <laughs> no, not, I have actually, I did actually do an onion adventure. Of course I didn't. But, but, um, but you know, I've not been in the podcast for a little while, unfortunately. And I, yeah, I'm back. Boo! Barely, right? even Barely, Barely even noticed. I know, right? I didn't even notice. Oh, Joe's really similar. It's just like less loud whimsy. <laughs> um... And yeah, no, it's because unfortunately my other half has been really ill again. Uh, she's she's got cancer back. People listen to the podcast probably know she had cancer before because I've mentioned it. And mm. at the moment, I'm just looking after her. So I got a night off tonight because it's sort of my job is to sort of look after her and make her cups of tea and stuff. 
So I thought, hey, night off. Me boys. El Dudo, night on the town, come oh. and record a podcast. It's well, you certainly really took the wind out of my heckling sales. Well, it's been really fun recording a podcast with hey. you boys. Regular feature boys. Uh-huh. I tell you what, it's been great fun listening to the podcast. I've been like a reader. I've just been listening to it and being like, mm. <laughs> these guys are funny. Yeah, I got to listen to the last one, the uh, log you did with Joe and Gav. And that was... <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? You, you, you didn't look like you didn't wow. mean to do that. Your body really won't let you give me a compliment, will it? <laughs> that was a oh, you're a... <laughs> Steve, why do you hate me? <laughs> Vile man. Readers, I apologise. <laughs> No, it was my mouth. No, it made a burp. Uh, but yeah, no, um, so that's why I've not been around and I won't be around again for a little bit it's for some time and then I'll be back. But I'll just pop in every now and then and uh, do stuff. People on the subreddit have been talking about your best features and giving you well wishes. Oh, that's very and, kind. Uh, they're, they're all thinking of you. Well, I'm getting married this Saturday. Bum, bum. And they're all invited. Every- what? No, 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 no. Thank God this broadcast is coming out the week after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm getting married this weekend. That's going to be great fun. You guys are going to be there. There will be, probably be drinks. There will be snacks. We and, might, uh, me might, after the wedding, drag you into a room and make you spend two hours doing a podcast. Oh, oh man. Wedding, be lots wedding of fun. podcast. you got to do it. Um, He's smiling. That means he wants to do it. I'd love to. I'd love to. I've, I've got, like, unfortunately, I've got, like, do things on the day, like, keep an eye on my other half and stuff. And uh, But you guys should totally. totally also in case you comes a mop. <laughs> yeah. All right, I've got to get married. And they do say that the day really goes by really quickly and then maybe it's not a good idea to waste an hour of that recording a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's lots of things to be said about this idea. There's lots of things. But Nobody you... knows how many hours there are in a day. Just fucking spend one of those, that inquantifiable sum on yeah. doing a podcast. What well, if we do it first thing in the morning? We show up next to your bed on the morning of your wedding day with <laughs> a microphone. Call those can the if you want. I haven't really got many plans, to be honest. Uh, just, just knock on my door at like eight. <laughs> get out of bed, you fucking... Dick. Um, well, Matt, you're welcome back on the podcast whenever thanks, you like. Don't worry much. about it. We can uh, always so find a space. Always open. You're one of our favourite guests. My well, second favourite guest after Sean Bell. Oh, oh, man. Well, maybe one day I can be, a, <laughs> you're so I can be official. Yeah, you could be. We can ordain you as a regular feature. You've got to write log around on stage. Oh, man. The process has to be repeated. It's the only way in. Oh, yeah. We should treat you like I've like, been a lost sheep that's gone. And if I want to come back, I need to go through all the same rituals I went through the first time, which we can't talk about <laughs> yet. But, God, some of them are crazy. Yeah, off by two thirds of you your colleagues. About, I just told you not to talk about this. Um, <laughs> do a little kiss. I know. <laughs> Make a little noise. <laughs> Make a little noise. And you can get down tonight. And take yeah. a drink on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, get get down tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> so many things to do, uh, but yeah. Also, um, yeah, we did. I uh, currently today doing a big, a big uh, kind of crowdfunding thing for the fact that like my other half's treatment has been massively expensive, and I'm probably just going to say at this point because it's probably gone really well and we probably don't need any more money because we're already kind of at that point now, which is crazy. But if you're a reader and you donated money to that, thank you very much. That's awesome. You're brilliant. Put it all on black. Oh, what's the worst thing that can happen? You get twice as much cancer treatment for your money if you win. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. In the game of uh, dice, you win or you don't. (laughs) Yeah, I don't don't actually have access to the money. That would be be morally wrong. (laughs) Steve, you want a cape? (laughs) Give me three capes. You debobble my cape first. I'll debobble your cape for you, Matt. And then, and then I'll get you a cape. <laughs> With my seven ninety nine debobbler, I will. I'll debobble anything you want me to, man. I can buy you a better one. Hi, I'm the monolith from two thousand one, a space odyssey. And I've got a bone to pick with you. Why aren't you listening to the Regular Features Podcast? We'll see you next week, podcast readers. We love you. Sleep tight. Don't have nightmares. (laughs) Spooky dookie. (laughs) It's spooky at the end of the episode all of a sudden. (laughs) On this spooky themed episode. (laughs) October. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye.